Measuring the cornea. Why we need to do better, I do consult um, with Zeiss, so I want to acknowledge that, uh, that point. So if you take a patient with a normal cornea, and uh, this is a patient of mine, the refractive target was minus one and a half. You can see the biometer readings there um, for this patient with two different devices. Um, the, uh, the Holiday One formula, you can see there. Uh, this biometer was, uh, was a different device, not the Zeiss device. The dual shine flug device, the spherical equivalent ended up minus 0 0.87 with the biometer's errors for the K reading, at least from the refractive error, of 0.58 diopters. I repeated the measurements because I was surprised, and what I found was the biometer measured much lower on the second go around, uh, which would have actually corrected the error that you see here, this 0.58, and the dual shine flug device actually gave a steeper cornea. So that's what we face every day in practice, isn't it? Variable corneal readings. Why the variability? Of course it's tear film. The course is the corneal surface. It's user skill. Most of the devices really are very good, and I think the more we're measuring larger zones now with more points with the LEDs, we're getting very good readings. And um, so the, uh, the Iowa Master 700, as you know, has uh, 18 of these uh, 950 nanometer lights, and we've heard about the telecentric uh, keratometry. I'm a big fan of looking at the visual imaging of the reflections of the LEDs, the Myers, and when, uh, this to me is one of the great uh, qualitative ways that I can judge whether or not I have good, uh, a good uh, reading on these patients. When we get into more complex corneas, these are our data in keratoconus eyes, this is the refractive pr prediction error, and you can see the big spread. We're seeing a lot, there's a lot of variability, there's a big error, and some of that error clearly is in our corneal measurements. So again, measuring larger zones, more zones, more spots is going to be helpful. Um, so the, the complex anterior corneal surface, uh, we're going to need to have multiple measurement zones. I think ray tracing is going to be the future for these corneas to understand the optics better and predict the optics better and we're gonna to need to measure the posterior cornea. So what about the posterior cornea? How do we factor it in? Well, right now we measure some spots on the front of the cornea and then we extrapolate to the back um, and we use a population average of what the curvature in the front is to the curvature in the back and we use that to calculate total corneal power. And we can do that a variety of ways. So what value should we use? Well, in normal eyes, what we found is the ratio is about 0.81, uh, which is, nearly identical to what was reported uh, many years ago, 2002, by Doubleman. In myopic LASIK eyes, it's lower, and in hyperopic LASIK eyes, it's higher, all of which is another way of saying you can't use the front in those eyes in order to predict total corneal power. That's a lesson we've learned the hard way. Um, but even in the normal cornea, there are variations in this ratio, and we've seen that there's the occasional surprise where the back of the cornea doesn't match the front in the way you expect, and it could be as high as a half diopter good reasons to be able to measure the front and the back. And in the abnormal corneas, as uh, uh, Oliver Findel just discussed, this extrapolation clearly is off. Patients who have had corneal surgery, whether it's refractive corneal surgery or some form of keratoplasty, and patients with ectasia, ectatic disorders. So what approaches do we use? Well, we use two approaches in our patients. That was the, the point of that question, wasn't it? How do we do it? Well, you can use regression solutions that are based on averages. Um, you can use, you can directly measure the posterior corneal surface. And uh, those are the options. There's an intermediate option, which Graham Barrett uses in his formula, which is he uses some regression, but he also uses other data to calculate posterior corneal curvature, so it's not purely a regression approach. And that's in the Barrett suite that's available in the Iowa Master. So when we looked at post-refractive surgery patients using a variety of methods to predict uh, a, a refractive accuracy, we found with OCT, we actually had a, a, a modest but not significantly improved uh, result over the other formulas, but we're only at about 68% plus or minus a half diopter. So we need to do better, and we think that getting better corneal measurements will do that for us. So our view is that regression only has a certain amount that it can achieve, and that actual uh, measurements, though, have been a challenge for us. And, uh, of course, we face that challenge in all these types of patients that have had other forms of keratoplasty. 
Well, why is the posterior cornea hard to measure? I think we all know the answer to that. It's because there's such a small difference in the refractive index between the posterior corneal surface and the aqueous. So it's tough to identify and quantify that surface, and there's no gold standard. There's no way you can really have something to compare it against. So that makes it a real challenge. And now we're going to complicate matters by adding astigmatism. And as you know, that if you measure astigmatism based on the anterior corneal surface, you're going to introduce errors in your calculations. You're going to overcorrect with the rule patients, and you're going to undercorrect patients who have against the rule astigmatism on the anterior corneal surface. So how do you factor that in then? So what are we going to do when we're faced with a patient in our practice? Well, um, you can use regression formulas based on averages. You can measure it. And um, there are a lot of technologies for measuring it. There's Scheinflug technology. Uh, there's OCT. These are elevation-based methods. And there's direct reflection, as you have with a Cassini device. But if you look at the formulas, and again, I put the Barrett in there as a regression. It's not purely regression, but we're at about 80% plus or minus a half when we do it really well. So we still have improvement to, to, to gain and, and, and more to achieve for our patients who really have high expectations. And um, the reason for the fact that these uh, that regression approaches have fail is probably a lot of reasons. Some of it may actually be our refraction. Maybe we're doing better. We don't know it. But there's so much scatter in the human population that when you just take a population average and apply it to the next patient who comes to your office, you're going to introduce errors. Well, what about this TK, this total corneal astigmatism that's available with a 700? We've been working with that a little bit, and we did some data comparing standard biometry, which is their anterior corneal surface measurements, which we like very much, to the TK measurements uh, from that device. And here are our results. This is a double angle plot. And with a double angle plot, uh, with the rule errors are over here and against the rule errors are over here. And you can see that we, using just the front measurements of the cornea, have a, an error of 0.34 diopters at 9 degrees. But when we, we use the TK measurement, we end up with 0.17 at 18 degrees. So it's reducing it by one half. You think, well, maybe we're still not getting it all. Well, there's another factor, and that's IOL tilt, which probably accounts for that remaining 0.15 diopters. So we're excited about this. These are our initial results. They're encouraging. We have a lot of work to do with oblique, with the rule, and so on, and bigger numbers. But it's interesting. And we have big demands from our patients to do a better job for all these different kinds of patients that require better anterior and posterior corneal measurements. So we need to, uh, and we hope and we believe that our new technology is going to give us a lot of improvement for accurate measurements of the anterior cornea, the posterior cornea, and even in complex corneas. So thank you very much.